What's up, Freaks? It's Tex here, and today we're checking out Obscure. Obscure was released back in 2004, and I swear, this has a very simple premise. Imagine a teen horror movie in the form of a video game. That's the best way to describe it, and it really does feel like a teen horror movie. It has your stereotypes, you know, they have the jock, they have the hot girl, and they have the nerdy friend. And then it also has music from Sum 41 and Spam. Now, back in 2004, when they were dying off, they were kind of a big deal, but it just seems like... A teen horror movie. Like I said, it even has a soundtrack down to a T. I mean, Sum 41? Only, you know who listens to that? Teens. Like me. Even though I'm in my 20s now, technically. God, I'm getting old. But overall, Obscure isn't really a bad game. Actually, I really enjoyed it. Not only because of the horror movie feel, but also, it's actually a pretty solid game. The story goes, a group of friends stay after school in Leafmore High, trying to find their friend who has disappeared. They instead come across some pretty crazy monsters and find out the school has some pretty dark shit going on inside of it. The story as a whole isn't bad. It's pretty decent. It's passable. It has a lot of cliches in it. it. Just, I don't know, maybe just poke fun at the whole teen horror genre. But what makes the story pretty annoying to play through are the characters. You never really like them at all. Just about all of them come off as being dicks. That's the only way to describe it. Each one has little things about them that you just don't like. And like I said earlier, they all are just stereotypes of what you expect in a horror movie. So I guess that's why they're kind of annoying. Although the voice acting for the characters are pretty good, so I give it that. Visually, the game looks good. The lighting is really good in this, mainly because the enemies are vulnerable to light. So you can bust open a window and just shine a bunch of light from the sun into the room to kill all the enemies. The graphics are good too, and the CGI cutscenes are really nice to look at. The game is looking bad for a game that came out over 10 years ago, is what I'm trying to say. The controls work pretty great, too. It's not really your classic survival horror tank controls. It still has the fixed camera angles, but it controls a lot better than most survival horror games at the time. Mainly because your characters don't move really, really slow, and how you can actually aim and shoot at the same time. But the camera angles are kind of annoying because you're inside of a school the whole time, so you're in cramped hallways. So there's situations where you're just not going to be able to see the enemies that are attacking you. Something else I like to mention is the game is cooperative. There, you can, it can be two-player, which I think is fucking awesome. If you're playing by yourself, you'll always have an AI control partner with you, and <clears throat> they're not really the best. Sometimes they're kind of useless. But it is cool how you can pretty much switch to every single character, so you can really find the character you like the most and just play as in the entire time. And each character has their own little special ability. Be it nothing special, like one can pick locks faster, one can run, nothing really special, it just changes up the, the characters themselves a little bit. But if you want to play this game with a friend, you definitely can, and it's pretty fun when it's in two player. Some other little things I mentioned is that it has a crafting system, you can pick up items along the way and you can mix them together. For example, you can take a flashlight, mix it with duct tape, and you can put it on your gun, that way you have a flashlight on the barrel of your gun. You can also save by picking up save disk and save exactly where you're at. So it's a little item that you have in your inventory so you can save, and they're everywhere, so it wouldn't really be that hard. The puzzles are simple and straightforward. They really just require you to find a valve, a screwdriver, or something to really get past an obstacle. And it's never really far away. Although halfway through the game, there are some pretty interesting puzzles, but other than that, it's nothing special. The enemies are pretty cool. Be it the little ones are pretty much the same every time, but the mini bosses and the actual big boss fights are pretty awesome. Every single enemy in this game is vulnerable to light, so uh, you really get into a pattern of blasting them with your flashlight to draw them away, run away to the nearest window, busting it open, and let the light hit them. It's not only really a bad strategy, but when you're facing little enemies, that's usually what you do every single time. Although the big ones, though, the best way to take them out is to blast it with your flashlight and just unload on it into the entire clip. So the monsters aren't too bad. Like I said, you'll be facing a lot of the same little tiny ones that are always around. And then the mini bosses and the bigger bosses are actually more interesting to fight. Like I said, not bad, but after a while, you'll just get to a point where you've seen just about every enemy in the game. Well... That's pretty much it. Overall, I really enjoyed Obscure. I didn't think it was that bad of a game. It has a few pluses, a few minuses here and there, but none substantial. Like I said, the game looks good, has some decent controls, has a nice crafting system, some fun co-op play, and a few decent scares here and there. The main thing holding it back is really just the cliche annoying characters and the cliche story. 
Other than that, this is a solid game. I recommend you check it out if you have a PC, a PS2, or an Xbox. It's just a fun game to play, even if you can't get into the story. Alright, freaks. Thanks for watching. I'm Tex, and I'll catch you next time.